Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to take a look at how to set up your lighting and camera settings for better render quality results. Please note that everything in this tutorial comes included with iClone, aside from the characters used to demo. Okay, let's start off with atmosphere settings using Lightroom presets. iClone's default lighting is not really ideal for final rendering, as its main focus is on animation and motion editing. Your default iClone scene will contain four separate lights, which we'll talk about in more detail in a bit. You can find a free resource pack in the content manager called Scene and Effects, which you will need to have to follow along with this workflow. It contains a number of different lighting presets in the Atmosphere group, which contains presets including image-based lighting, general lights, as well as lens flares and light sets. With a light set, you will find lights attached to a dummy prop for the purpose of grouped positioning. You can drag a couple of Atmosphere templates into your scene to test out how they look. You want to pay attention to how they are set up in the scene manager as well. As shown in the previous illustration, you'll see a number of different light sets, each represents a different numbered dummy prop. Within the light set group, there will be any number of lights that will be attached to the dummy. You can toggle the visibility of the light set dummies to see which areas of the face they will affect, and also see where the source lights are placed as well. You can multi-select all of the light sets to move them simultaneously. Since the lights are each pointed at their respective light set dummies, it is easier to pinpoint a specific area for lighting if you move the light set dummies there. This can be useful when you need to adjust your lighting for characters with different proportions, like taller or shorter ones. The dummies can also be rotated to light up different parts of the face as well. You can also apply Lightroom templates. These contain all of the aspects of Atmosphere templates, but also specific camera presets, as well as background images and props. So be aware that if you load up a Lightroom preset, that it will replace your cameras and any other Lightroom content. Lightrooms are really great ways to focus on giving your character a particular personality with mood lighting. We'll look at how to save these as a custom set later on. Another important aspect of getting your best renders is to ensure that you have high quality textures and use the best settings in SkinGen. You'll want to ensure that in the real time render options section of your preferences that you have high quality selected, and also max texture size set to at least 4K. If your original character's texture size is not up to 4K standards, you can send it to CC4 to make improvements via the SkinGen workflow. Once the character is imported, you can click the Activate Editor checkbox in the Materials tab to get started. You can apply any number of presets here, or simply swap the texture resolution to 4K from the drop-down, and then select Update. Once you exit SkinGen by unchecking the Activate Editor box, be aware that it may take some time to bake all of the newly defined textures. Once you're done, click the Send to iClone button to update your selected character in iClone, and be sure that you select No in the next pop-up unless you want to erase any current animation you already have for your character. Another way that you can refine the appearance of your character is through subdivision and mesh smoothing. In the Smooth Mesh section of the Attributes tab, you have a checkbox for Smooth Mesh. Make sure that you have selected all of the meshes that you want to smooth out before you check this, including the body, hair, clothing, etc. You can notice the difference particularly on areas like the ear and hair here. When Smooth Mesh is activated, the edges won't be as jagged, and hair will seem denser and more detailed. You can also use the associated sliders to enhance the effect further. Be aware that increasing the real-time slider will affect your editing performance, so if you are concerned about system resources, you can choose to only use the final render slider. Another subtle way to enhance your character's appearance is by using different camera field of view and depth of field settings. Lower focal length values can often make your character's face seem a bit distorted and elongated, particularly at close distances. You can enter into the current camera settings by using the button on the top toolbar. Here you can see that if I adjust the angle of view or focal length sliders, they will significantly change our perspective 
without us actually physically moving the camera. For a close-up portrait look of your character, an angle of view of 20 or focal length of around 100 are the values you want to aim for. If we go up to create a camera now, it will use our current preview camera settings and now we have the option to go down to activate our depth of field in its respective section via the checkbox. The easiest way to focus on your character is to click on Pick Target and then click on its face. You can then proceed to tweak the near transition region in the blur settings to get a soft look to the background or even around the edges of your character's face. Be aware that if you move your camera at this point that you will need to re-pick the focus target. On the topic of lighting, you will also need to be aware of your shadow settings. You may encounter shadows that look a bit too sharp for the atmosphere that you want, so what you will need to do is find the specific light which is responsible for casting that particular shadow. You can enable and disable the shadow casting on each light to see which shadow settings you need to adjust. From there, you can select a lower shadow resolution for that particular light amongst many other adjustable settings to get the result that you want. Once you have all of the settings that you like, you can save everything as a complete preset. I'm first adding a couple of decorative props to my scene, after which I'll go into the stage group of the custom tab and find the atmosphere subgroup. Once there, I can click save at the bottom and proceed to name it. Naturally, you'll want to ensure that asset type has the proper group path, which should automatically be there if you were already in the atmosphere group. You can do the same for a Lightroom template as well. Finally, when you're ready to render, there are a couple of anti-aliasing and render settings you can adjust as well. Once you have a frame of your animation that you like, ensure that your focus target for your DOF is set, and then do a preview render of the current frame by using the F10 hotkey. For the best render quality, we recommend using PNG, which is an uncompressed format. The image or video size is totally up to you, but in the render quality section, you want to ensure that you have final render selected. If you don't have anti-aliasing selected, you may encounter a number of jagged areas, particularly around the backlit edges like you see here. To fix this, you can choose a 2x2 or 3x3 anti-alias setting in the render settings. You can see the big difference between the two settings is particularly noticeable in the aforementioned areas. It's noticeable in all these examples here too. That's about it for the basics of how you can use basic lighting, material, and camera settings to enhance the visual result of your character render. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next video.